Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install Windows 8. And I'm going to be doing this on an HP TouchSmart IQ520 something. I'm not exactly sure the model off the bat. It's an IQ500 series computer. And we're going to see how this goes. I got Windows 8 on a DVD. So I'll go ahead and start the computer up and get started with this. This computer is an IQ524. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to insert this disk. And it should be directly from this, the DVD. As long as I got it inserted properly. This is my uncle, my great uncle's computer, and I've always wanted to have the opportunity to actually mess with Windows 8 on a touch enabled device. And of course, this touch mark's going to enable me to do that. Now, just so you know, with some touch marks that have NVIDIA graphics, they have a known issue with the screen blacking out. This one here has, I believe, Intel integrated graphics, this particular model, the IQ524, but there are many others out there that have NVIDIA graphics, and basically what you have to do is there's a workaround to fix the problem. Basically what will happen is during installation, the screen will go black, and you have to have some sort of, let's say like a Linux disk, that way what you do is you start to install Windows 8, and when it gets ready to restart the computer, just shut the computer down, and you have to use the Linux disk to boot the computer with a Linux operating system and go access the files on the hard drive and delete a couple of files that reference the NVIDIA drivers and then you actually proceed to go into Windows 8 with installation, let the installation finish and then go into the power options and set a PCI Express um, not, not exactly sure off the bat but there's something you have to change to get the actual turn it off and then go to install the latest NVIDIA drivers but we shouldn't run to that problem here. And of course here's the wireless keyboard that comes with this computer. And the wireless mouse. This is the Windows 8 setup. It's similar to Windows 7. You go ahead and click next. Click install now. Setup is starting. I noticed that, um, okay, now we've got to enter the product key, so. What's funny to note is in Windows Vista and Windows 7 you had the option to bypass entering the key right away. That way if you want to try the operating system out you could do that but with Windows 8 it's different. You have separate installed media for trying out Windows 8 or actually install Windows 8. If you want to go try it out there is a version you can download. It's like a test version but you must reinstall the operating system with the actual um, activation version in order to keep it, which I think is ridiculous. That's what I've heard anyway. So Windows 8, you have to have a product key there right away to even get past this screen here. So I'm going to enter a product key. And of course, this is getting blurred out. You can't see my product key. You accept the license terms. This mouse here, you have to have a firm hit on it to make it click. 
do custom install which I've already formatted this disk before I even started this because I had to, had to take the drive out and backup files and stuff so the drive is already formatted so we're just going to move on if you had to do any changes here you would do them right here basically what I'll do I'll go ahead and just say um, delete and format again because it might want to create a um, system reserve partition just say new say apply Because one is A to B is, yep, like one of seven, it wants to have that system reserve partition. Used to be it was 100 megabytes, now it's 350. So we'll go ahead and click next. Which, by the way, that system reserve partition contains files for recovery. Like, let's say if Windows can't start for some reason, there's recovery options within that system reserve partition for like. Accessing system restore, command prompt, that kind of stuff. But what's funny here, if you notice, this window does not look like Windows 8, it looks like Vista 7. It has the error version. Anyways, you can you can kiss that goodbye once this gets through because Windows 8 does not have error. The developer preview actually did have error in the desktop, which I wish they would have kept it. But they decided to get rid of it. Anyways, I'll go ahead and let this go. The computer will restart during installation. And we'll move on from there. Now it's time to go ahead and set everything up. And so you can personalize all sorts of settings here. Even though it looks a bit on the Fisher Price side to me, but go ahead and select the car. Choose green. And it's time to assign this computer a name. Go ahead and select next, which is at the bottom of the screen. This computer has built-in Wi-Fi. I'm not, I'm not going to connect to wireless because the computer has an Ethernet cable plugged into it right now. So we're going to go here, select, click, um, connect to a wireless network later. We're going to um, say customize to show you all the settings. on sharing which is I'm glad they offered this um, selection because it used to be by default it would just connect to um, it would set your network as public and not all networks are airports and coffee shops and you've also got home networks too you know, I'm not going to install important recommended updates and say I'm going to get device drivers apps and if I want new devices say own Turn on Windows Smart Screen, that's the Internet Explorer thing. Okay, there's an Internet Explorer Smart Screen, so they got, they got one for Windows and Internet Explorer. And send a do not track request to websites you visit in Internet Explorer, set to home, but of course, Internet Explorer is only just a tool to download another browser such as Chrome. We'll select Next. Here's some other options here. I'm going to leave all of these set to off. Use one's error reporting. I'll leave that set to on. Leave this set to on, which is Internet Explorer compatibility list. Make sure you see what I'm doing here. I had the camera look down too far, but anyways. I'll leave these set to default. And here you have the option to use a Microsoft account or just a regular account. So let's see. Now with the option, you have the option to sign in without a Microsoft account. We'll just do that. 
You say local account. I'm going to sign a name for this computer. Put the name of the person in. We're not going to put a password in right now. We're going to click finish. We're going to finalize settings. Which I'm not sure if there's any touchscreen drivers installed just yet. Here's some important things to look at for Windows 8. This tells you how to use it. It's not very often you get to see how to use Windows 8. And of course, um, it treats your PC like it's a tablet, whether it has touch or not. It's telling you to swipe in from any edge, but you can only do that on something that has a touch screen, which is maybe about, maybe, I'd say 20% of all computers out there, or actually about 10% of all computers out there. Now it's showing you how to do it with a mouse. And then to get that cursor just right, I'm telling you, that's just the way it is with this. Well, it's doing this over again. I guess it just plays this over and over until it's ready to go. I thought I actually um, explained more than this is, but anyways, here we go. Yeah, saying let's start. And here's that t here's that very annoying start screen, which notice how empty it is. Let's see if we have touch. Yep, we have touch. So this is the desktop. So basically, this is how uh, Windows 8 looks on a touch smart. And I believe we have to install a different driver to get um, multi-touch. I think that's something else you have to download. But um, anyways, this is how you install Windows 8. And of course, as of right now, there are no service packs or anything out just yet. Windows Blue, which is actually Windows 8.1, will be out later this year, 2013. Now, let me also go ahead and check our drivers. Now, of course, you can right-click here in the corner. And you get access to all these different things like device manager. Let's see what devices we have here. So I need to go through and um, check all the drivers and everything for this computer. And if you notice, it's still using the high definition audio device generic driver. So where the display is. Yep, this one uses the Intel graphics rather than NVIDIA, so that's why we didn't run into an issue with the screen going black. But basically, I'll have to run through and check out all these devices for dri um, updated drivers. So anyways, I'll go ahead and do that. Basically what you have to, do, have to do here is you have to download drivers for this computer from HP's website and you'll use the Windows 7 drivers. And it picked up all the Ethernet drivers, so not sure what this is just yet. Let's try updating driver software from here. Just gonna search online and see if I can find anything. And it has found the driver software. Click close. So basically we have drivers installed for everything. Now I'm going to get the correct driver for this um, HD audio device. Okay, I just downloaded the driver, so let me go ahead and go access it. User account control. Which I normally turn that off. Sometimes these files like to um, 
Every once in a while I find a file. See, just like I was thinking, this same system is not made to operate system requirement. Okay, what, basically what I did is I was having issues trying to get this file to run because of HP's dumb software that checked your operating system version to see if it's so-called compatible or not. What I did was I um, launched the file, went to Task Manager, and found the file. Once right-clicked and went to um, Open File Location, and I copied the files out of their source locations so that way when I exited the um, HP installer they wouldn't automatically delete and then I went and found the source file which was in the SRC folder in here so now I got this run so I'll go ahead and install this audio driver basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get this installed I say no, restart the computer there because I got to do one more thing I have to make sure Windows is activated so, <clears throat> this is different than what I'm normally seeing. So, let me see. You drag up from the bottom with your finger, hit all apps, and look for control panel. It's right there. Got to use the mouse for this. Say small icons, and go to system. Then I'm gonna move the camera to the side because it's probably gonna show registration information. And Windows is automatically activated. It does it, it does it automatically? So nothing to worry about there. I'm sure if it has an issue, if it has an issue with um, um, activating it would notify you that and tell you what you had to do it's telling me that the um, touch is single touch support so I'm going to install the driver for multi-touch there is a driver available for that so I'm going to go ahead and get that off the computer and go ahead and get it installed which by the way if you, you probably heard me talking about issues with NVIDIA graphics earlier on some of the IQ 500 series touch smarts this is the website that talks about that is www.realmonline.com slash ehpiq500.htm here's a close up of that so that way you can go look this up and here are the drivers I need to get for multi-touch right next window.com that's pretty easy to remember Now let's see if I can get um, these drivers. Not sure where to go, but let's see. Downloads, I would assume. Windows 8 touchscreen driver, so let's give that a try. So you've read agree to terms and click download. We'll save this file to my downloads. And it's downloading right now. Now of course you can do this from the computer you're working on. I just I just prefer to download stuff from the mid tower lux and access it on the computer I'm working on. Yeah, I'm going to run this installer. This should make the touch screen compatible with um, multi-touch better than single touch. Which I have to say, even though I can't, really can't stand Windows 8, I think it actually works nice on a touch smart. Because when you have the Metro interface up the, um, the start screen, you're able to use the touch capability, but you can access the desktop and do things like you've always have. Click close. I'm telling this mouse is very aggravating. I'm going to restart this computer. 
And it's funny. To restart the computer, you have to go into settings. It's, this is not very, very well laid out. This is going to go ahead and restart. And I'm going to make a follow-up video on, on using the touch interface after I get everything else installed and like the software and everything. And see if um if all the computers out there were touch, this would work very well. But Windows 8 is re being released. I mean the way it's designed is touch oriented and most of the computers out there aren't touch. Like these touch smart compete these touch smart computers are not cheap. But uh my uncle got this one used. I'm not sure how much he paid for it, but it had Windows 7 on it. And I asked him if he wanted to give Windows 8 a try. Because it's a, t it's a touch machine. So anyways. Go and access desktop. And there's your desktop. Now I'm going to go ahead and get um, all the other software such as browsers and stuff installed. But this is how you install and set up Windows 8 on a HP TouchSmart IQ 524. Anyways, I had no questions or comments. Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.